Today we're going to learn how to find what are called skyscrapers, which are X chains of exactly three links and have their own particular easily identifiable shape, just like a two-string kite. But unlike a two-string kite, which can only produce one candidate elimination at a time, a skyscraper can provide up to four candidate eliminations. So they are the most powerful of these simple X chains that we have been studying recently. In the beginning of video number 14 about Turbo Fish, I went over some basic info on AICs and specifically on X chains that will apply equally well to today's lesson. So if you haven't watched that tutorial, please go back and watch it right now, which will save me from having to repeat all of those things. Okay? Great. As I mentioned a minute ago, a skyscraper is composed of three links. Strong, weak, strong. And the links themselves will always lie in some combination of columns and rows. It will either be in two columns and one row, or two rows and one column. And the pattern will always look like an offset letter U, or an offset x wing. So let's go over to the puzzle board and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that these hand-drawn diagrams are not real puzzles. They are not meant to be solved or critically analyzed. They are for demonstration purposes only, so please try to focus only on the particular point I am trying to make. Okay? Great. Now I am trusting that everyone has watched video number three on strong links and weak links and video number four on basic AICs and that you have also watched videos 14 and 15 on turbo fish and two string kites. If you have watched all those tutorials and understand all the principles contained in them, then skyscrapers should be a piece of cake for you. Mere child's play. In an open-ended AIC with an odd number of links, and that starts and ends with a strong link, we know that at least one of the endpoints must be true, right? There should be absolutely no doubt in your mind about this fact by now. All right, here in this diagram, we have a simple three-link AIC. So let's start on this candidate here in row two, column three. And there's a strong link down to this candidate 7 in row 9, column 3. Then there's a weak link across to this candidate 7 in row 9, column 6. And then finally, there's a strong link up to this candidate 7 in row 1, column 6. So let's mark the endpoints. There are your endpoints. And let's draw the links. Here's a strong link and then a weak link, and then finally a strong link. So the first seven in the chain in row two, column three, is either true or false, right? That's all it can be. So if it's true, it's true. Done deal. And if it's false, then the seven down here in row nine, column three, must be true because there are only two sevens in column three. And if that yellow 7 is true, then the 7 in row 9, column 6 would be false. And because there are only two 7s in column 6, the yellow 7 up in row 1, column 6 must be true. Everybody understand that? This proves that either the 7 in row 2, column 3 is true, or the 7 in row 1, column 6 is true, i.e. at least one of those endpoint 7s must be true. Therefore, any candidate 7 that can see both endpoints of the chain must be false. So here in this diagram, these four candidate 7s must be false because they can see both endpoints of the chain. And don't forget, you can start on either end of the chain and apply the same logic, and the net result is exactly the same. It's like a mirror image. Notice that there are two other cells that can see both of those endpoints, and they are right here and right here. But if there were a candidate 7 in either one of those cells, it would ruin this pattern because the strong links in column 3 and column 6 would be negated by the presence of a third candidate 7. So those can't be there, okay? 
As I mentioned in the last video, for two-string kites and skyscrapers, we are going to use a slightly different coloring system than the one we use for other AICs and loops. For two-string kites and skyscrapers, I think it makes more sense to color the two endpoints yellow and the two weakly linked candidates blue. So let's get rid of these colors and change that right now. We've got a strong link here and we've got another strong link here. And here are the candidates to be eliminated, those four sevens. And let's draw the links. So we've got a strong link here, and we've got a strong link here. And in between, we have a weak link. So there's your chain. One of the endpoints must be true. The four sevens that are colored red can be eliminated as false. Now remember, in a two-string kite, the two strong links emanated from a block. But with a skyscraper, it's almost the same thing except the two strong links are emanating from either a row or a column. In this case, a row. They're emanating from row 9. All right, let's go over the basic characteristics of a skyscraper. A skyscraper is an X chain of three links. Strong, weak, strong. Using the same digit candidate throughout. There is an effective strong link between the two endpoints, which means at least one of the endpoint candidates must be true. Thus, any same digit candidate that can see both of the endpoints must be false and can therefore be eliminated. And there can be up to four candidate eliminations with a skyscraper. When an AIC takes this particular shape that you see here, it is called a skyscraper. Notice that it looks like the letter U, but it is offset up here at the top. Also notice that if either one of the endpoints was moved one cell, like if this candidate 7 were up here, and the two endpoints were in the same house, i.e. row 1, this would be an X-wing. So a skyscraper can also be perceived as an offset X-wing. This is another way to help you find them. So let's draw the links. We've got a strong link here, and we've got another strong link here, and they are connected by a weak link down here. The weak link down here at the bottom is called the base. But please do not confuse this with the base sets in a fish pattern. This is the base of the skyscraper, that's all. Base meaning the foundation. It is called a skyscraper because as in this diagram where the two strong links are upright and vertical, they kind of resemble two tall buildings of different heights. I like to call these two uneven conjugate pairs the spires, okay? Like in column three and in column six, those are the spires. This is my own term, and I hope you don't mind if I use it to help explain this pattern. Skyscrapers will always have this basic shape, but they can appear in several different orientations. For instance, it can look like this, or it can look like this, but it cannot look like this. In this case, you would simply have two sets of locked candidates type 2, and both of those sets of two sevens will claim all the other sevens in those two blocks. The two sevens in column three, one of them must be true, and the two sevens in column six, one of them must be true. So these other four sevens in block one and the other four sevens in block two, they would all be false because of the locked candidates. The base of the skyscraper must lie in a chute other than the chute containing the endpoints of the chain. The two chutes must be parallel but different, like in all these diagrams. But the skyscraper also has four rotational orientations, like this. When the spires are upright, it is these four sevens that would be false. Okay, 
And when it's upside down, it would be these four sevenths would be false. And when it's facing left, these four sevenths would be false. And if it's facing right, these four sevens would be false. Everybody see that? The logic works the same for all these configurations. These are all skyscrapers. All right, let's review some basic rules for skyscrapers. A skyscraper will be composed of two conjugate pairs that lie in two rows connected by a weak link in a column or they will be two conjugate pairs that lie in two columns connected by a weak link in a row. The endpoints must lie in the same chute, but not in the same house. Otherwise, you would have an X-wing. The weak connecting link, which is called the base, must be in a chute other than the endpoints, but it must be parallel to it. The pattern looks like an offset letter U and the U can be oriented four different ways, up, down, left, or right, as we just saw a minute ago. Now there is another very interesting thing about skyscrapers that I would like to point out. As I have repeatedly mentioned, many times you will find that there are two or more solving techniques applicable simultaneously that will produce the exact same result. Along these lines, a skyscraper can be seen as two sashimi X-wings, like this. Imagine that there are some other candidates in this cell up here, okay? And then we look at that as a fin. So now there's our X-wing, the two yellow cells up here and the two blue cells down here. There's your sashimi X-wing and a fin. And that means these two candidate sevens are false because they can see the fin. And likewise, in the other block, if you had some candidates here and here and here, and that would be your sashimi cell, and this would become your fin, which would make these two sevens false because they can see the fin. This forces you to go through two operations to get rid of those four candidate sevens instead of just one with the skyscraper. But if you have a sashimi X-wing with candidates up here, let's say, and you have two fins, instead of just one, then you are forced to treat it as a sashimi X-wing and you will only get these two eliminations in the same block with the fins and not the other two eliminations in block two. So if there is only one perceived fin in either of the blocks, then it is to your advantage to treat it like a skyscraper because it is a faster and more efficient way of making the same eliminations. Now remember, the uneven conjugate pairs are thought to look like two tall buildings of different heights, as if you were looking at the skyline of Manhattan, for instance. This best applies to orientation number one, where the spires are upright. But you also have to be able to imagine this image rotated 90 degrees to the left, or 90 degrees to the right, or rotated 180 degrees, where it looks like it is turned upside down, as we saw earlier. And one last thing before we go to the real puzzle examples, if the two endpoints of the skyscraper happen to lie in the same block, like this, meaning the two spires lie in the same chute, this will still work, but there will be a maximum of three candidate eliminations instead of four, like this. These three threes will be false in this case and no more. You will not get four candidate eliminations in a configuration like this. Got it? Okay, let's look at some real examples and some real puzzles. Okay, in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate two. We'll light them up. Now what we're looking for is two conjugate pairs that are parallel, which means they have to be in two rows or two columns. And if there are two columns, we want them to emanate out of a row. And if there are two rows, we want them to emanate out of a column. And that house that they're emanating from, we call that the base. And then the two conjugate pairs have to be situated in such a way that the endpoints lie in the same chute, but not in the same house. And when you've got all those things going together, you've got a skyscraper. So let's take a look. We've got a conjugate pair here. 
and we've got a conjugate pair here. One in column two and one in column five. And they are emanating out of row seven, which is our base. So in this example, the two spires are right side up. And there are two cells that contain a candidate two that can see both of those yellow cells. And they are right here and there. Those can be eliminated as false. Those two candidate twos are false. So let's put them back in there for now. And then let's draw the chain. We've got a strong link here, and we've got a strong link here, and then here is our weak link in between in row seven. That is the base of the skyscraper, and the two conjugate pairs in column two and column five are the spires, and this allows us to eliminate the candidate two in row three, column three, and in row one, column six, because they can see both endpoints of the chain. All right, next one. Okay, here in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate three and let's not use the filters this time. We've got a strong link in column six that goes from here to here. And we have another strong link next door in column seven that goes from here to here. So this time the spires are upside down and you have to be able to see them like that. And the weak link is in row one. That's our connecting link. That's the base, even though this is upside down, those two blue threes are the base. And that's a surrogate weak link because as you can see, it's really a strong link, but we're using it as a weak link. So the candidate threes that we can eliminate here that can see both of those yellow threes are this one, this one, and this one. Okay, now don't get confused. This three that's colored green does not see both of the endpoints, okay? It's these three red threes because this one can see that one because it's in the same row and it sees this one because it's in the same block and these two see this one because they're in the same row and it sees this one because they're in the same block. So don't get confused. This does not see both endpoints and you cannot eliminate that one. But you can eliminate these other three threes, okay? So let's put them back in there and let's draw the chain. We've got a strong link here and a strong link here and then we've got our weak link in between. The arrow there doesn't really make any difference. It doesn't matter which way that's heading. I could actually just use a line for that instead of an arrow. But there you have it. There's your skyscraper. It's upside down this time. The two spires are facing downward, but you can eliminate those three red colored candidate threes. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, here in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate eight. And once again, our conjugate pairs are right next to each other. We've got one here to there, and we've got another one here to there. So there's your base in column six, and there are your two spires. This time they're facing toward the left. So that means we can eliminate any candidate eight that can see both of those yellow cells. And we've got one there, we've got one there, and we've got one there. There's three of them. And all those three eights are false. So again, let's put them back in and draw the chain. We've got a strong link from here to here. And we've got a strong link from here to here. And this time we're going to use a line for the middle link. So it's going to be a line from there to there. There's your middle link. Because it doesn't really matter which way that's heading. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, here in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate five and let's highlight them. And we can see that in row five, we've got a conjugate pair that goes from here to here. And we have a parallel conjugate pair in row nine that goes from here to here. And the endpoints lie in the same chute. Our base is in column one. And that allows us to eliminate all candidate fives that can see both of those yellow fives. And they are here, here, and here. Now notice that this five does not see the five in row five, column nine. It only sees the five in row nine, column seven. So you cannot eliminate that candidate five, all right? The only fives we can eliminate are here, here, and here. So let's put them back in as always and then draw the chain. So we've got a strong link from here to here and we've got a strong link from here to here. There are your two spires and this time they're facing toward the right and then we're going to connect these two candidate fives in the base 
with a green line and there's your chain. It doesn't matter which way you go, you can start on either one of those yellow fives and the result is the same. The fives in the red cells are false. Okay, next. Okay, in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate eight and let's light them up. And we've got a conjugate pair in column two emanating out of row six and we've got a conjugate pair in column seven emanating out of row six. So there are your two endpoints. This means we can eliminate any candidate eight that can see those two yellow colored eights. And we've got one here and we've got one here, only those two. Okay, so you can eliminate those two eights like that. But we'll put them back in for purposes of seeing the chain. And we're gonna draw the chain now and we've got a strong link from here to here. We've got a strong link from here to here. And then we have a weak link from here to here. Okay, got it? There are your two spires are facing upward this time, like your regular skyscraper. Orientation number one. Okay, next puzzle. All right, now that you're getting the hang of this, I think we can go a little faster. Let's take a look at candidate one. And we've got a conjugate pair from here to here and another conjugate pair in a parallel column from there to there. So let's draw the chain. We've got a strong link from here to here and another strong link from here to here. And we have our connecting link from here to here. So this means we can eliminate any candidate one that can see those two yellow ones. We've got one here and we've got one here and we've got one down here. Okay, so three eliminations that time. This one's facing downward. The spires are upside down. Okay, next one. All right, again on candidate one, we've got a conjugate pair here in row four and a parallel one in row seven. There's your skyscraper. This time it's facing left. So here's the chain. Got a strong link from there to there, strong link from there to there, and our connecting line in between, our connecting link. That is a weak link because you see there are other candidate ones in column four. So that's a weak link. We have strong, weak, strong. So now we can eliminate any candidate one that can see both of those yellow ones. And we've got one here. And we've got one here. And we've got one here. So those three candidate ones are false. Got it? Okay, next one. Okay, this time on candidate eight, let's look at row five. Let's color the cells this time. We've got a strong link from there to there. And in row seven, we've got a strong link from there to there. So the base is in column one. The spires are facing toward the right and we can eliminate any candidate eight that can see both of those yellow eights. And they are here and here. There are only two this time. There aren't any in block nine because the three cells in block nine that can see both of those yellow eights are already filled in with numbers. Okay, next one. All right, this time for fun, I colored in the whole skyscraper. So we're looking at candidate seven and in column one, we've got a conjugate pair there going upwards and in column eight, same thing. We've got a conjugate pair, the two endpoints in the same shoot, but not in the same house. So we can eliminate any candidate seven that can see both of those yellow colored sevens. And in this puzzle, there's only one. And it's right there because there aren't any down here in block one where there could have been. And there's only one up here in block three. So that seven is false. We'll put it back in. Let's draw the chain real quick. And we've got a strong link here on this candidate seven up to that one. And we've got a strong link on this candidate seven up to that one. And then we've got our link in between the two sevens like that. Okay, so there's your chain, strong, weak, strong, only one elimination this time. And here the two spires are in orientation number one where they're both pointing upwards. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, here on candidate nine, in column three, we've got a conjugate pair. And in column six, we've got another conjugate pair, both emanating out of row two. There's our base, those two blue cells in row two are the base, and you can see it's a weak link because there's an extra nine over here in row two, column one. So that is a weak link, a real weak link. 
And this means we're going to have three elimination cells this time because there are three nines that can see both of those yellow nines. And they are here, here, and here. So you can eliminate all three of those nines. But let's put them back in and take a look at the chain. So we have a strong link here, a strong link here, and we have a weak link in between. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this time on candidate three, we've got a strong link in row one, and we've got another strong link in row four, both emanating out of column nine. So there are your two spires facing left, and we can eliminate any candidate three that can see both of those yellow cells, and they are gonna be here, here, and here. And we can eliminate all three of those threes. I don't think it's necessary to draw the chain. Let's go to the last example. And of course, I saved the best one for last. On candidate seven, let's look in row four. We've got a strong link there. And in row eight, we've got a strong link there. So any candidate seven that can see both of those yellow sevens is going to be false. And this time there are all four. One, two, three, four. You can eliminate all four of those candidate sevens. And while we're at it, let's draw the chain because it's the last one. We've got a strong link from here to here. And we've got a short strong link from here to here. And the weak link is in between those two sevens from here to here. Strong, weak, strong, therefore we can eliminate any candidate seven that can see both of those yellow cells. That is a skyscraper. And as you can see, they are very powerful because they can provide up to four eliminations at one time. Okay, let's go back outside and finish up for today. Okay, well, there you have it. Skyscrapers are sometimes hard to see, but you should practice looking for them because they are a very powerful solving technique and you can normally find two or three of them in just about any puzzle of medium difficulty or higher. There will be an adjunct video to this one, video number 16A, which will be a review of the three simple X chains we just covered, turbofish, two-string kites, and skyscrapers. So be sure to watch for that. And then, in video number 17, we will learn about what are called empty rectangles. This is one of my favorite solving techniques because the logic behind them is very interesting, they are really easy to see, and they are also quite common. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Until then, be well and be happy.